Hi and welcome. My name is Rich Bassini and today is December 30th, 2021. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to start by saying thank you to all the new subscribers who recently subscribed to my channel. It's greatly appreciated. Hope you like the content and come back for more. This is the first time visiting my YouTube channel. I like to do the reseller news. Let's talk eBay. And on occasion, I am a vlogger. So I uh, hope you can get a little takeaway from the information I put out. Today, I want to talk about some news and I want to just share my thoughts and opinions on it so I hope you guys could stick around and check it out but before I get started let me just show you one thing really quick I just picked up and hopefully oh, let's see if I can get to it there one more time here it's right over here and what you see here folks I just want to get this video here this one here I picked up yesterday at my local thrift store and as you can see to the right here uh, it's changing colors if uh, for those of you who don't know this is what you call a Crowsley uh, it's the AIM FM CD player, whatever, uh, jukebox, mini jukebox. And uh, right now, what's up on sale for eBay? Um, I just want to throw it out there. I just wanted to show you this little quick video here. I had to shut the lights off to just show you the color on here. It's really got nice colors to it. Um, but as you can see over here, whenever I do my listings, I always, like I said, for those who are new, especially if you're a newbie, um, I always like to be very definitive and uh, my descriptions and as you can see these three little arrows over here the white arrows or the red arrows I'm sorry um, you'll see there's two on the left side here if you're fa you know, facing me or facing you I should say they got little scuff marks on there and the one at the bottom is where the Crowsley uh, nameplate would be so uh, at this point in time those are the things those are the only issues this unit has uh, it's been tested it works great um, I tested the CD play around there it plays good everything's works on it it's got an AM and FM radio and what happens is when you could see over here um, right over here this here will fold down it drops down and that's when you'll have your radio switches in there um, if you guys want to check it out it's on eBay right now it's a nice unit um, I think it's about maybe 12 inches in height I don't have the dimensions in there it's, I believe I have the dimensions in there if not I have to put them in uh, but it's it's not too bad. It's like probably about maybe 12 inches high a little over 12 inches high Maybe about maybe seven or eight inches in width, you know, but um, it's not bad It's a little mini jukebox and uh, the wording over here. There's a little lettering you see over here That's just simulated. There's no songs on it, of course And over here when you look inside here as you can see here where the, the thing is changing They don't really have a good color view. It's a little dark You'll see like a little uh, a little record player in there with the record arm and stuff like that, but for the most part, um, yeah, that's what I got going on right now. At, at um, this is on eBay right now. I think that's the last color it changed. I think it's the orange. But anyway, um, let's go back to um, hello everybody. Here I am. Yeah, keeping busy here. Um, I got my laptop set up over here as always. I have to keep track on that to see if I get any listings from eBay, and uh, that's what it's all about now. What I want to share with you guys on a reseller news is uh, basically I just want to go over some stuff with you guys really quick. Oh, I can't say quick. I always say quick and it's, it's not the way it turns out to be all the time. Um, I want to share my own thoughts and opinions on this stuff here. So, And the, at the same time, um, I want to keep you guys in the loop of what's going on in the changing e-commerce world. In this particular case, what's going on within eBay because I am an eBay power seller. And... I love sharing information with you guys, so I hope you could stick around. So without further ado, I'm going to bump out of this screen here, and we're going to jump into the uh, regular screen, and uh, I'm going to give you the URLs just to let you know as well. Um, I do not read everything verbatim. I'm going to give you URLs, and you're going to pick up where I left off. It's basically just to keep you guys in a loop of what's going on in, uh, within eBay, okay? All right, so without further ado, let me just uh, pause this here, and we're going to go to the uh, main window. Okay, here we are, folks. Well, before I get started with the news, I just want to share something really quick with you guys. Um, eBay, if you type in on there, I don't know if you, or you're aware of this, you may be aware of it, but if you type in over here, www.ebay.com forward slash deals, it's going to bring you to this page over here. As you can see, they have some pretty good deals, okay? And it's as you can see right over here where my mouse cursor is, it's until... January 3rd so you might want to take advantage of it. but just to scroll down really quick just to give you guys a little overview of what they have you could check this out at your own leisure like I said folks I'm not gonna expand too much on these topics but they do have some pretty decent deals for when I was checking earlier um, this is what they got I mean I'm sure there's more too uh, you could check it out or click it on but right now this is what they have uh, just to share this with you guys and if you buy now 
uh, you'll get an extra 50% off uh, the essentials for the new year. So if you get a chance, check it out. And if you want to get the coupon, you click this on here and you'll get the coupon to uh, put in at the, you know, when you're processing your, um, your order. All right. So I'm going to close that out and let's get started over here. Now these next, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six windows are going to be from my favorite site. And my favorite site, as a lot of you guys know, especially the newbies, well, not the newbies, but the people who have been following me know my favorite site is right here, e-commerce bytes. So let me give you URL and expand the little H here. And then we're just going to keep moving right along. So it's www.ecommercebytes, one word, dot com. Okay. So it goes on to say, and I like to throw the dates out, by the way, too. Uh, this date here is December 28, 2021. It says eBay lets buyer keep refund for a late arriving package. Kind of crazy story, but I'm going to put it out there anyway for you. So let's read a little into it here. <clears throat> it goes on to say, Dear Ina, I sell comic books on eBay. I sold a $200 comic book to a guy that was due to be delivered December 2nd, came December 22nd. It was seemingly lost in the USPS tracking. It showed it never left origin facility. Uh, and a customer filed a request through eBay for a refund, which I issued. Okay. Then it goes in. Five days later, the book was delivered. I contacted eBay to have a refund reversed, and they said no. They said no because I was willing, refunded. I willingly refunded the buyer. That is, eBay didn't force me to refund on my on you know, refund. Wait, force the refund on me. So it goes on to say this is a bit of a damn if I do, damn if you do situation. Isn't it? And it says eBay forces me to issue a refund strike to my other uh, strike to my seller account. I issued a refund in good faith. I'm out 200 bucks. First off, I said this in my other videos, and I'll say it again and again and again. I'll repeat it. When it comes to sending items, my threshold, folks, is hundred dollars. Anything over hundred dollars, I send with signature delivery confirmation. Now, technically. If this person's saying they got it later on, it's possible. I mean, the mail does, you know, it does get lost in the mail, or maybe it does, you know, maybe it wasn't processed. Maybe it was a due to shortage. Who knows? You know, a workman shortage, whatever. Uh, things do happen. Okay, mail does get lost. But in this particular case here, eBay, and I'm just, and I'm saying this again. This is my own personal opinion. They should have stuck by the seller. Okay, and when that, in one respect, because the seller was willing to offer a refund. Okay. However, the way eBay went about letting the buyer keep the seller's money is not right at all, okay? I mean, I don't think that was fair in any, in any way, size, shape, or form. eBay should have made good and give the uh, seller the refund, right? So now, look what happens. This person is out of a comic books, right? And now, what are you going to do? I would, if I was this, if I was a seller... I would fight it. I would take it to the higher level, go to, you know, whatever, uh, general manager, whoever, who, and, and get somebody on the phone, explain the situation to them, and say, listen, you know, what? This, what's the deal here? You know, I sent the thing out with them. It was it, it got there later than usual. You know, let me tell you something else, folks. <clears throat> you know, this has uh, been an ongoing issue with eBay. I love eBay. I've been on eBay for, over, you know, for 20, not over, for 22 years. And I have to honestly say, I think even they might have saying it too, and even like the U.S. Postal Service put out, shop early, you know. It's not, it can't blame the buyer so much. I mean, all right, now if it's supposed to be due December 2nd and it came there December 22nd, I don't really see, you know, too much of a grievance there. Um, the buyer still received it. Uh, if the buyer wanted to do a stand, you know, be a stand-up person, what they should have done is say, hey, listen, I received it. Uh, due to it being late, I would prefer to have my money back, you know, can you refund me? What the problem is that seller did is he was too eager to jump in because he probably is a you know he's probably a power seller or maybe he's just a top rate seller. He wants to keep a good face with eBay. He probably figured, well, look, let me issue the refund ahead of time. I don't do things like that unless eBay will contact me and say, look, the buyer hasn't received it, and this is what you know we want you to you know you could refund the buyer or whatever you know unless eBay tells me this person sounds like this seller. Uh, apparently uh, took it on their own initiative to uh, refund the buyer I wouldn't have just done it like that me I would wait here's what I would have done if I was a seller tell a buyer if you no longer want the item to please send it back to me and then I'll issue a refund this is the problem and I said it once before and I'll say it again eBay has a thing when it comes to returns 
Okay, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, especially if you're a new babe, please pay attention to what I'm saying. They will tell you, they will get they will contact you once a buyer opens up a return request, they will tell you the buyer is sent you open up a return request and they're gonna ask you, they're gonna tell you eBay gives you the option. You can send them a refund before you get the item back. Okay, you could send them a refund, and that's it. It's like cases closed. In other words, they, and, and they'll tell you the buyer will get to keep the item. Don't do that. When it comes to when it comes to a situation like that, the other option will be is what eBay is upon receiving the item and you check it out. Once you receive it, then you issue the refund. That's what I do, and that's the only way I'll refund the buyer. Okay. Now, for example, I was selling a little glass lid. Uh, for a fatherware coffee pot, okay. The buyer opened the return request, okay, and I message a buyer. You know, they said it doesn't fit. I said fine, send it back. I said please make sure it's well packaged because it's glass. So they sent it back, and then upon receiving it, then I checked it out, make sure there was no chips on it, they didn't break it or whatever. And then once everything uh, checked out, then I re then I refunded the buyer. Okay, that's how I do it. So my word to a you know my word. To you guys, as far as like, you know, my own experiences, definitely get the item back and then uh, refund the buyer. Okay, don't do it ahead of time because if you, I'm telling you, you'll check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, eBay puts it in there. If you refund the buyer now prior to getting it back, don't, they'll tell you, don't expect to get it back and they keep it. Okay, so don't do that because the buyer, you know, there could be a discrepancy there as far as shipping. They could say, well, I sent it to you, but I never received And then the seller could say, I never received it. You know what I'm saying? It's your word against theirs. So don't do that there. Make sure you get the item back, all right? I feel bad for this person here. Um, let's see what it goes on to say here. It says eBay typically up, uh, eBay, eBay's typically up helpful CS rep suggested I contact the customer and ask him to send back the refund. I told I told the smug little unmentionable that the, of course I've already done this and of course still silence on the customer's end. Um, here you go. Just I was just like I said I didn't get a chance to read the whole thing. I said I've been a seller on eBay for over 20 years. Every time I have a problem like uh, like this here on their website, I always lose. I never won. Well, you know what? If it's that bad, where you have bad experiences like this with eBay, that you know it's an ongoing thing. Um, you could, you know, you could reach out to them and explain to them and, you know, hey, you know, what's the deal here? Uh, I'll tell you the truth. Um, like I said, I've been on eBay for 22 years and thank God I never really experienced things of this nature where I was out of money per se. This is a lot of money to me. Uh, but I will say this. Of all the times I've contacted eBay customer service reps, they always were there for me. They always had my back. But then again... I've always done the right things too. I always did the you know, in my descriptions. I was very definitive, as I showed you that picture before. I highlighted the things that would you know like were defaults on that item, that mini jukebox. And let me tell you something: as long as you put everything, when it comes to writing a description, again, this is for the newbies. Be very definitive. Okay, it's just like this cell phone I have here. Okay, if I'm when I'm selling the cell phone, if I'm not, I'm going to. If I was selling the cell phone. If it had a scratch on it or a ding or a chip like it at the edge or stuff like that, I always first look. My rule of thumb is when I'm doing it, when I'm doing a listing, I will keep that object in front of me. I always do. It's just to force a force of habit, and I will look over everything, even if I do a demo video or a sneak peek video or intro video, and because sometimes I might forget to do something. That has happened. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's happened. I would do a demo video on an item. And then later on, say, oh, my God, I put in a video. I'm not going to do the video over. I'm not going to remove it from YouTube. But I would say, my, you know, then I would say, oh, geez, I got to put that. So, but it's listed. It's in my description. So where, I, where let's, let's say it's been left out of my video, not intentionally, okay, um, I will then put it, I will then note it in my description. But keep that item in front of you and look at it. I've seen it a couple of times it happened to me, folks, where I would do a video on an item telling you, oh, it's so great, this and the other. And then, then when I get it, after they do the video, and I start looking, I said, oh my gosh, I forgot to put this in there. Or I forgot to tell them that, let's say it's a cassette play, that the cassette don't work. But I was telling them how great it is. 
So sometimes, you know, these things come to you, you know what I'm saying? So make sure whenever you're writing a description up, you, you do it to its full entirety. Whatever it is in there, whatever, like I said again, if this thing had a scratch or a crack on it or whatever, or something's not functioning properly, make sure it's noted in it. Because let me tell you something, folks. You, what's that old saying, run, but you can't hide? Uh, you can, you know, leave things out. Not willingly. It could be accidentally and the person will get it and they'll say, like, let's say this, let's say this iPhone, I say it's perfect condition, works great. They'll get it and say, yeah, but the buyer, the seller said it was great, but it had a chip on it or the glass was cracked. It was something along that line. You know what I'm saying? So be careful when it comes to that. Now, with this person here, what I would have done, again, I would have sent that thing out with signature delivery confirmation. Okay. And let me tell you something else. You know, when it comes to sending things like this out, the, what the, the seller could have done, the seller could have reached out to the buyer and said, look, you know, I don't know if you want this by Christmas, whatever. Even if, I'll tell you the truth, even if I had to pay out of my pocket, I found this happen. Uh, whenever I'm doing a, a sale, right, it'll say in the listing, it'll say the buyer uh, requested parcel select or selected parcel select. Parcel select, for understand, is five to seven days or something along that line. It's not, it's not quick. It doesn't go quick. All right. I've seen it and I've done it before. If you look on there when you get ready to do the checkout or print out your list, uh, your uh, label, your shipping label, if you look, it says compare other uh, uh, other seller, uh, other options or something like that. You'll see, and this is the gospel truth. I forget what it was. I shipped it out yesterday. Oh, I can't remember what it was offhand, folks. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, the parcel select, there's no exaggeration. The parcel select price was 810 for this item. It had to be a small line because the thing wasn't that. Oh, it was a keyboard. It was a keyboard. I'm sorry. Computer keyboard. And the uh, USBS uh, priority mail service, which is, I think, three to four days or something along that line, or two to three days, something like that, um, it was the same price, 810 It was a no-brainer. So I just said, you know what? Why send out Paul Select? I was getting it with priority mail. Now, I've been doing like this here for quite some time, and I never had any problems with latenesses, okay? When it comes to... When a buyer makes a selection, they say they select, parcel select, look at the other services that's offered, okay, and see. In some cases, you'll find out, and it might even be a difference in, in uh, shipping cost. For example, like I said, parcel select, let's say parcel select is uh, $8.25. Uh, the USPS priority mail might be, uh, might be $8.30. So even if it costs you an extra nickel or a dime, whatever, at least you know you're doing the right thing by the buyer. They're getting their items within a couple days ahead of time, you know what I'm saying, as opposed to later on. So that's the thing. That's how I would handle it. But if I was this person here, this seller, I would definitely do a follow-up on it there and call up and complain. And I would stick to it until, until something was done about it. You know, just because a customer service rep says they can't do anything, that's when you got to go to the higher ups and speak to management, upper management. A customer service, you know, they can only do so much for you. But I got to say again, before we move on to the next page, eBay's customer service has always been good to me. They always had my back when, and because I was in the right and because I did the right thing. And like I said, folks, if you follow all the if you follow all the protocols and you do the right thing eBay will stand by you. Believe me, it's, it's, it happened with me, okay? many Not many, but a couple, a few times it happened where they had my back because I'd done the right thing, okay? So when you're doing things of that nature, um, even like I said again, my rule of thumb is when it comes to sending expensive items out, well, I consider if you're selling watches, product, po pocketbooks, whatever, uh, you know, computers, laptops, stuff like that, anything, my threshold is anything over $100, I'll send it out with signature delivery confirmation for the simple reason is someone's got to sign for it. Now, I know they have other services there where if you make a range with the postal service, they could still work around. There's a work around that. But for the most part, I like to have it set in stone where so when I'm sending something out with signature delivery confirmation, I want that seller, I mean that buyer or someone at that residence has got to sign for it. And when they sign for it, it's got to be an open and shut case when it comes to any discrepancies with the person saying, I never received or whatever. If it's going to that household and someone signs for it, it should be an open and shut case, plain and simple. I don't know how this is going to turn out uh, for this person here. I do feel bad. Uh, that's, that's a lot. To me, it's a lot of money to be you know, out of. But um, let's see what else they have over here. I don't, 
he's just saying how he, he lost he never wins okay well i don't know about this gentleman here the seller but i'll tell you one thing if it was me i'd be i'd be all on it i'd be right on that there believe me i wouldn't let no especially 200 bucks it's a different story you say well you're at a five or ten you could always write that off for a simple reason you know but for me 200 bucks i'd be on it i'd be complaining to high end believe me all right anyway um that's crazy that's really crazy folks but uh if you want to read the rest of this here or read if you go down to the bottom here you could also read the comments <laughs> i recommend people check those comments out because if what people write on this it's pretty interesting what they have to say i always like to read those comments to hear what other people say and some of them have some <laughs> juicy things to say if you get my drift all right uh no no profanity and stuff like that now i'm not talking about stuff like that but anyway um let's move to the next one here let's close this window out this one over here seller navigates ebay shipping charges after uh, on an atlas sold now an atlas you know the atlas books and stuff like that they with all the maps i believe that's what it is uh, this person's writing to ina steiner for those who don't know ina steiner she is the uh the editor and the co-founder i believe of e-commerce bytes uh this service has been around as long as i've been on ebay 1999 as you can see right over here okay it says giving sellers a voice and by the way where i got your attention hopefully you could also sign up for their uh newsletters as well you get the same email notifications i get but if not don't worry folks you're not to clutter your mailbox up i don't mind cluttering mine up i will put the information out there uh so you don't have to worry about it. like i always say i do the research so you guys don't have to all right this story came out december 27 2021 it says on oh, here someone's writing to Ina it's saying dear Ina as a no as all normal people will tell you an atlas is a bound book in every way hard bound book with no advertising and meets all postal guidelines for media rate but apparently not on eBay I listed four last night sold one and the buyer paid media postage rate postage indicated right it says I got it so then it goes on to say I go to print the label and it's not allowed I called eBay first agent hung up on me never had that happen to me yet second agent told me to go to the post office and wait online one of the busiest days of the year now that's kind of crazy i mean well they're just doing their thing over there i guess and then it goes in it goes i asked him uh, if he knows ebay if, if ebay did something wrong here and hedged around the question normally i wouldn't care about the postage went from one from 760 to 25 cents to 25 dollars that's crazy um yeah you know there is a thing with them they do have a thing ebay uh well i should say ebay but there uh the postal service has this thing all about media mail i highly recommend you go to the site and read about it i think a lot of people try to not intentionally but i think they misunderstand the guidelines in there i have what can be shipped and what cannot and they try to they try to ship out things on the media mail and according to what i was reading they will get they, they will inspect it okay because let's face it media mail is cheap especially up to 70 pounds um you got to be careful with that there folks people try to get away with it and the postal inspectors uh or postal inspection they will uh check them out to see that if you're you know abiding by their rules and regulations on what can be what can be sent out as media mail and what can't so be very careful with that folks okay seriously uh, then it goes on to say really quick P.S. I already moved my three other large Atlas books to the books category. It's just bizarre. eBay does not think an Atlas is a book. Why even have that category? You know what I can tell you? Reach out to them. You know, that's all I can tell you, folks. Reach out. You know, when I have a question, a matter of fact, let me share this with you really quick. Uh, I was looking. I called up eBay yesterday, I think it was. Uh, yeah, I think it was yesterday. Um, I noticed all my active listings had zero views on them. Yeah. And now this happened years back, a couple of years, a few years back it happened, where all my all my active listings, nothing didn't affect the watches, but all the active listings had zero views on them. Okay. So I was concerned, just like I was back then, and I said, hey, you know, I called the customer service, very cordial, you know, didn't raise my voice, get upset. I don't get upset with the customer service reps. What what's their it's not their fault. You know, they're like the foot soldiers, they take all the beating, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> from people from irate sellers that call up or people complain to them. But anyway, so uh, I called up and I asked them, I said, Is there anything going on? And she said, Well, let me go check and see, you know, I she goes as far as she knows there was nothing, no issues or glitches going on with the system. Then she goes, she wanted a little further checking in. She did a little further checking in, and she did say that they were up later on, I guess after she did her research, uh, that they were doing some kind of changes there. And that, uh, and I asked her, 
I said, well, is this going to affect the people viewing my items? Are they still searchable on uh, on the web on the website? She said, no. She goes, everything should be good. You know. Now I will say this: I don't know how long those had the zero views on them. In other words, I don't know how long eBay. Uh, whatever they were doing over there, if it was a software upgrade or hardware upgrade, I don't know how long it's been like that where it's been zeroed out. That's the thing. Because I go back and forth sometimes. Like I said, I've been in and out of the house, running around, running errands, stuff like that. I don't know how long it was. So people say, well, how long did you notice? I couldn't tell you. All I know is when I came home and I turned on a computer, I looked at my, uh, list, my active listens as I always do to make sure everything's good, you know, everything's going good with that. And all I seen was zero views on it. So that's when I called up and that's when I asked them. How long it was out like that, I don't know. But if you guys want a little word of advice, if you want to check out and see like ongoing issues that eBay, other uh, sellers and buyers are experiencing, go to a website called downdetector.com. That's it. It'd be www.downdetector, one word, dot com, and you could read the issues that other buyers and sellers are experiencing about what's going on at eBay, okay? And sometimes they'll be bringing things out to you and I that I wasn't aware of. And I found that out a couple of times when I went to Down Detector, and there were there were people on there putting stuff out that said, geez, I didn't know that happened. Because not everything affects everybody, folks, okay? A lot of the times uh, when I do these type of videos and I talk about people issuing, you know, having different problems on the site, whatever, it doesn't always affect me the same way as it affects them. So you know, sometimes I could, you know, sometimes I could expand on that topic, and there's times I can't, I can't expand on it because it didn't actually happen to me. But anyway, long story short, I refreshed the screen, and voila, they all came back. As far as how long it's been down like that, well, you know, but the change has been like that, where it was zeros. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't give you an answer. I don't know. But anyway, keep an eye on that, folks. Check your active listings out and see if you have zero views on them. Uh, the ones I have listed on there had quite a bit, hundreds of views on a lot of them. But I didn't, thank God, whatever they did over there, they came back and I remembered, you know, okay, yeah, they did have 500 views on that one, 600 on that one, whatever it is, you know. But uh, just keep an eye on it, you know. Again, corner to the eBay technician there said that it shouldn't affect your your sales or anything of that nature but who's to say right you take their word for it all right let's go to the next one all ebay stores can now upload videos this story came out december 12 2021 folks i've been putting videos on my listings many many moons not many moons ago but years ago uh, matter of fact i have one um for the ninja coffee maker i believe i think i did one for that uh, I, I'm quite sure it's on there. It's for the Ninja Coffee Maker. You don't see it on this main channel because I put it on the Shop RJ Percent for Great Deals uh, YouTube channel. I don't want to, you know, burden you guys with all these different videos and stuff like that. So I put that on another channel. But if you look at that listing, I'm quite sure it's that one. If I'm not mistaken, my memory serves me right. Um, it should be with the Ninja Coffee Maker. And I think I did it. Yes, I think quite sure that's the one I did a video on. And it's at the bottom of the description. This has been going on for quite some time. Now, Again, this they're saying, I didn't have a store years ago either, okay? Years ago, I didn't have a store. I didn't want one. I couldn't afford one. Well, I couldn't afford it. It was too, to me, it was a little too pricey, you know, for what my needs were. But now, I guess back then, uh, maybe they didn't allow videos up on your store, you know, if you had a store. But now they're saying over here, as you can see here, uh, over here in black and white over here, that now it says all eBay stores can now upload videos. They give you a little instructions over how to do it. On a help page, it says eBay explain how store owners could add the video, and then you could see it over here. One, select the store tab and sell a hub. Two, go to the about section, select the add video, and so on and so forth. You guys could read more into this here at your own leisure, but if you do have a starter store, I have a starter store. That's the basic one where I pay $4.95 a month for it because I do it yearly. If you do it monthly, it's $7.95 a month. You get 250 free listings. Anything over 250 free listings, uh, is 30 cents extra so for like I said if you go to 251 252 it's gonna cost 30 cents for each of those additional listings um, the thing I, I do like about having a store is you could put your own banner on there and you could add store category which is good and that's what I've done I got a whole bunch of different categories but they all pertain to the items I'm selling you know but they, to me it's got its uh, it's got its perks I like it some other people may bake to different but I like it all right let's go to the next one over here this one here, eBay publicly, publicly, 
publicly, I'm sorry, publicly, displays how much sellers have sold. I don't care what eBay, they're putting it on my store. So when you go to my store, it'll show you. He sold 1,000, he sold 2,000, whatever. If you wanna know the, if you wanna know the truth, folks, even if eBay didn't do that there, where they said they publicly display how much the seller sells have sold, look at the feedback. Now, my feedback, I don't have much feedback on my, what, what 1427 or something like that. It's more, it's more than that, okay? That's how many I actually sold. So either way, it doesn't matter whether eBay displays it publicly or uh, just you could you, you find out just by going to the feedbacks. You could just go do the feedback and you'll see. Um, mine should be about roughly, because I've been on and off with eBay, uh, roughly about maybe a little over 2,000 plus as far as uh, you know, uh, feedback from, from, from buyers. They don't, look, they're not required to leave feedbacks. It's not mandatory. It's not like when eBay said, they'll throw a little blurb out, you know, a little blurb out there and saying, hey, you know, how was your experience with the seller? You want to leave a feedback or something along that line they may do? It's a reminder. But you don't have to, res you don't have to respond, okay? You don't have to respond. Buyers don't have to respond and put, the they're not compelled to, uh, you know, give you a feedback. They don't have to. But I'll tell you one thing they will do, if something doesn't go right, and you sent them something where it didn't look right, item not as described, or uh, item was defective sold, they will put that in there. <laughs> but you know what? What's that all saying? No news is good news, right? Think about it. So if you don't get a feedback from a buyer, and I know it's happened with mine, um, that's, okay, that's okay, you know? It doesn't bother me in the least, I don't care. But I just want to throw that out there. And this was at December 8, 2021. Okay, let's close that one out eBay does more to protect sellers from bad buyers. I thought I'd share this story. It's come out December 15, 2021. It says over here, eBay is doing more to protect sellers from bad buyers, including ramping up detection of abusive buyers and expanding seller protections. It told sellers in the UK on Monday. It says the reaction from sellers was hardly jubilant. However, with some citing feedback sellers have provided in other, in other areas that eBay had not acted on and others showing skepticism of abuse of buyer detection should be working by now after years of failure will it work now i doubt it wrote one seller well let me put it this way um i had a situation where i sold an item again i wish i could remember these things anyway the buyer i think i talked about my other video the buyer left a, a positive feedback with a negative comment okay you got that the buyer <laughs> just to recap it the buyer left a positive feedback with a negative comment. Was it super bad? It wasn't super bad, but it wasn't super good. What did I do? I called up eBay. Well, I had them. Now you can contact them there. You'll have them call you. They call you now. I had eBay call me back, and I tell, explained to them, the teammate, why I would like to have that removed. I said, because the buyer, you know, it was supposed it was a positive feedback, but it had a negative comment. The buyer said, you know, the uh, customer service over there at eBay said, don't worry, they seen it, they understand the whole situation. It was removed, okay? I think they removed it. I don't know what they did. I think they left it there, but I don't know if they did something with it or just whatever. I don't know how that went, but I, from what I remember, it was removed, okay? I don't want that on there because all the people that look at my feedback, they're gonna say, wait a minute, you know, they left a, per, a, you know, positive feedback with a negative comment. What is that all about? You know, if you're gonna, here's what I have to say to buyers: if you're going to do stuff like that, if you if you weren't 100% happy with the thing, well, that's another story. You're gonna leave a thing anyway. But if you're going to leave a, a, a feedback, a positive feedback, don't leave it with a negative comment. One or the other. If you don't like it, say you know, just leave a negative feedback. But don't give a don't give a positive feedback with a negative comment in there. One or the other. You know, you, it's like, I like it, but I have to put this in there. I want, to, I want to just throw this out there. You know, that's kind of foolish in that part, but it is what it is. You, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. But anyway, um, I'm not going to read too much into this here, folks. You can read more into it if you choose to do so. Let's see, there's a lot more to read. Yeah, there's a lot. I'm not going to read all that. Um, you can check it out. That's the story you're looking for. Okay, let's close this one out. <clears throat> this story here, this story came out. What? November 3rd, 2021. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. It's old. I was going through a lot of emails, but I had to bring this out. Um, 
It goes on to say here, uh, eBay requires buyers to pay now for best offers. Now, again, again, I got something to say about this here, and I'm gonna, this is my own personal take on it. it. Says eBay is requiring some buyers to pay immediately if a seller accepts an offer. Uh, yeah, accepts an on an uh, offer on an item known as best offer. Then they talk about Casey Paris, who runs a content channel called Rockstar Flipper on Tuesday on uh, on YouTube, devoted an episode in the news on, to, on Tuesday. He's a good guy, by the way, Casey. He's been around for quite some time. Um, anyway, it goes on to say, Paris showed uh, a screenshot of an eBay user sent in that shows eBay language requiring the buyer to agree to pay immediately if the seller accepts an offer, including, your offer is ready to roll. We will send this We'll send this one off for you, and if it is accepted, we will charge you the total amount. Good luck. Okay, then it goes on to say, during the last week's earnings call, eBay CEO Jamie Lenone told the Wall Street analyst that eBay had effectively eliminated unpaid items on fixed price transactions and had continued to reduce this issue uh, for best offers. And then it goes a little further to say, it says he said unpaid items have been on the eBay platform forever, and now eBay is virtually eliminated in its fixed price, he said. And we're doing so in the best uh, doing so in the best offer, and so sellers won't have to face that issue if it takes uh, friction out of the platform. All right, let me give you an example. Let me just sum it up this way. Um, I have no problem with what's going on there. Now, people may complain about that. And they say, but I want, you know something? When, you, when I'm doing fixed listings, which all my items are fixed price, I should say, um, there is a part there when you're doing your listing, you could check it off, require immediate uh, payment. Okay. I've had it in the past and even to the present where when buyers when you when they make an offer and you accept it, they don't pay right away. They don't. Um, I had a buyer one time had to wait over a week. Another buyer had to wait four days. And then in some cases, after the buyer makes you wait that long, you might get a response from them saying, I wish to cancel it out. <laughs> Seriously. And I guess eBay feels no harm loss, you know. You, you you still get you could still relist your item. eBay will reimburse you for the fees if you're whatever the uh, selling fees, whatever they get for that, and um, you're good to go. But here's the problem. Here's the caveat to that. When that happens, whatever whatever watches you had on that item, they're gone. They're gone. That's it. Plain and simple. They're gone. Now you got to start all over again. Now I have good to cancel, so 30 days. So now they eBay will you know, say, okay, you'll get a mess from eBay. Uh, buy a cancel, wishes to cancel that. You acknowledge the cancellation. They go out. Now you got to relist it again. That's 30 days long. You got to wait and hope that you're going to get some more people come back. Now, in some cases, um, I don't know if they still do it. Uh, they used to in the past where if a, a seller had an item that was either, you know, let's say it was. Nobody purchased it and was getting relisted. eBay would send you a notification. This item is be listed, blah, 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 whatever it may be. And then you would go to that buyer because they give you the link there and you would see that item again. I don't know if they changed that up or not. But all I know is this. I'm okay with buyers uh, re you know, requiring it to be paid you know, right there and then. I, I, I like it. I personally, I have no beefs with it, no qualms with it. Okay? Uh, for the simple reason is uh, it allows me to you know, continue doing my work without going around chasing people down for the money. Because that has happened to me. Okay, on a few occasions, it's happened where I would send the buyer uh, an invoice saying thank you after they make a, if I accept the offer because you'll get a little cha ching, and then you'll say send the invoice. I would send the invoice to the buyer right there and then. If I didn't hear anything at the end of the day, then I wait the next day. I don't see any response from them. I, I, I contact them through via, via through eBay's message system, and I'll ask the buyer, "Your item is ready for shipping. If you want, you wish to, if you wish to have this item, please make payment, whatever. If not, please let me know so I can relist it again." Sometimes it works. If I don't get then after I send that, if nothing happens the next day, you know that day, then the next day I might see the little red thing there, the little red uh, indicator that's saying, "Okay, buyer paid." Okay, I don't want to go through that all the time. I really don't, and I hope that eBay will stay on this here and keep it like that. Okay, I don't want to keep chasing people for money. It's not all the time, but it happens on occasion. Okay, look, when you buy something from uh, Amazon or e or, or um, let's say Walmart's their, their site, any of those big sites, um, 
you don't have to pay right away. I mean, they'll allow you to save. In some cases, you'll say, save this uh, order for another time, whatever. You could save it and come back at a later date. But if you're buying that item and it comes to checkout, you're making a payment right there and then. Okay? You're making a payment right there and then. It's none of this uh, pay later, pay, to pay later, and then we'll ship it. It doesn't work that way. When you go to those sites, when I bought stuff off of Amazon, oh, I said the word Amazon. <laughs> no, but it's true. Uh, there were times, well, this is, you know, I mean, that has nothing to do with this. I don't really, it doesn't really bother me. But, uh, or even like with eBay, but for the most part, if I bought something from a site like that, uh, or Best Buy or whatever, um, I make the payment right there because I want the item. I'm not going to make, I'm not going to sit there and say, okay, I'm going to save it and I'll come back. Uh, a week from now and then maybe I'll buy no if I want something right there and then I'm gonna make the purchase I'm gonna buy it plain and simple you know so I have no problem with this here you know I, I'm glad that they're doing that now because to be honest with you I think in all essence that's a blessing in disguise that they're they're actually working with this here you know but then again that's my take on it now I'm not gonna read more into the story here there's quite a bit you could read more into this here um, you know, it's Casey over there. That's his website there. He, he's, he guy said he's a good guy. He's been around. Uh, I, I follow him on his YouTube channel as well. Um, but anyway, uh, you can read more into this here. That's the story you're looking for. I'm sorry. It's November 3rd, 2021, but it's still with this year. You know, it's last month. Sorry I couldn't get it out to you. I've been busy doing a lot of other things, folks, running around, doing listings and my, my thrifting on occasion here. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's not enough hours in a day, you know. All right. Now, this next story here is from Tame Bay. So let me give you a URL. It's www.tamebayoneword.com. This one here, I'm just throwing it out there, folks. Tame Bay is another one of my favorite sites. As you can see here, it says eBay promoted listings, advanced beta, new features. I'm just going to go over this really quick. Uh, this story came out December 13, 2021. It says promoted listings, advanced beta, new features. And I'm just going to read the highlights. Again, you can come back here. That's why I gave you a URL. Monthly keyword search counts, right? Uh, the ability to download campaign reports in, in bulk, uh, a negative keyword tab, a new, I'm sorry, a new negative keyword tab, getting tongue-tied already, negative keyword counts, uh, expanded keyword view area, eBay have hidden zero quantity or out-of-stock items, listing count summary, filter listings by store category, okay? And again, if you want to read more, you know, you want to read more into it, that's why I gave you the uh, URL for that there. And this is the story you're looking for. If you come to Dane Bay, you're going to look for the eBay promoter listings, advanced beta, new features. That's the story you're listening to. Good site too, folks. They're a good site too as well um, you know, for uh, keeping you abreast of what's going on in the changing e-commerce world, so to speak. All right. All right. So let's close that one out. This story you're going to find a little uh, <laughs> interesting. This is from the Mirror. Uh, let me give you a URL. It's www.mirror, right, .co.uk. Listen to this story, okay? Uh, it says we have Cheetos Crisp in the shape of a Loch Ness Monster goes on eBay for 630 k That would be pounds in their thing. It goes on to say a Cheetos Crisp uh, in the shape of a Loch Ness Monster had gone up from going up on eBay for an incredible 630 uh, and, and the owner said he wouldn't recommend eating the valuable item, but if you could... If you wanted to. Um, the reason why I'm laughing, folks, is because it was a story, and I got two other sites to share it with you. We're going to go to it right now. You can read the story. That's why I gave you URL. That's the one you're looking for. I find it amusing. I really do, folks. I'm sorry. I find these, these stories amusing. Let's click at this one here. Now, this story here is from CNNBC, so it's www.cnbc.com. Harambee-shaped Cheetos sold... For almost $100,000, this story, I know it's old, I know, so don't get upset with me. I'm just trying to bring a point here. It says published Tuesday, February 17th, 2017, uh, February 7th, 2017. Okay. Um, no lies here. I'm going to show you, you got one more page, and we're going to go directly to the eBay listing. You can do the same thing as well. I clicked it here, so hey, we could check it out. Here it is, folks, right here. A Gorilla Hot Cheetos Rare, one-of-a-kind Cheetos, Harambe Gorilla. See the original listing. You can click it on here. And, well, the original listing is right here. <laughs> there it is. Okay. And we got to go back to the other page to see it, but it did sell. Let's go back over here really quick. 
You know, I know people wouldn't believe it. They say, I don't believe it. Well, here it is right here. This is it. This is their site. Here's the eBay logo. Here's their website. Winning bid, right? $99,900. It had 132 bids. Could you believe it? 132 bids for a Cheeto. For a Cheeto. I couldn't believe it. Let me bump out of here, folks. Unbelievable. It's an unbelievable story. You know, those stories always fascinate me. And how about the one that was one the grilled cheese sandwich? We had the, uh, the face of the Blessed Mother on there. And I think the Golden Casino bought it. I think there was the one the Golden Casino bought, I think, for $27,000 or something like that. You know, grilled cheese sandwich that had the, had the face of the Blessed Mother on there. Going to the story. Um, that same company, I think it's a gold, again, I think it's the Golden Casino, Golden Casino, whatever. They bought the ghost cane. The story with the ghost cane was that the parent wanted to get that, that cane out of the house. I don't know if it belonged to the grandfather, and they thought it was, you know, strange things were happening by having it. And I find those stories amusing, you know. Um, you wouldn't believe it, but until you see it, then you, you'll believe what I'm talking about. Know, then you got to see it to believe it, so to speak. But anyway, guys, listen, that is all I have for you. I don't know how long this video is going to be, and if it's super, super long, I do apologize. But, folks, I love sharing information. I really do. I love sharing information with you guys. I mean, take these glasses off for a second. Um, as I say in my other videos, I don't have a book to sell you, and I don't have a dream to sell you. What I do have is the time to do research and share this information with you, especially if you're a newbie, if you're thinking about selling on eBay. Um, my goal is to, I, I would, this thing, the goal is to help you guys out. And that's why I created, uh, or this little thing I made up, an acronym is HIS, Help, Inspire, and Share. And um, that's what I want to do, folks. I, I want to help people, I want to inspire them, and I want to share information with you guys. Um, I hope the, and the reason why I do the reseller news and the Let's Talk eBay, there is a difference between the two, although some people may say, eh, not really, but there is. Um, the reseller news, basically, it's, it's what's going on, like I just talked about now, a lot of eBay-related topics. Um, and the other thing with the Let's Talk eBay is a situation that I might have had with, with let's say, with eBay, something they did I might not have liked, or uh, in some cases, a buyer. I might have done something or said something, whatever it may be. It's, it's even one of those things there. But there is a differentiation in between the two. And outside of being a vlogger, that, that comes later on as well. Like I said, I do talk about my YouTube channel. I do videos like that. And, uh, you know, I do some how-tos and do-it-yourselves. But I haven't done those recently on this channel. There are people out there that may think, although no, not many people ever really comment on my videos too often, uh, no one ever said to me, why don't you start different channels for those different topics? You know, like let's say a channel for reselling news and a channel for Let's Talk eBay and have a separate channel for vlogging. You know, folks, I'll be honest with you. I'm lucky I can manage one uh, channel. Now, I do have a secondary one, but it's basically just, it's for eBay. It's a shop RJ Piscini for great deals. And again, that YouTube channel is basically for demo videos, sneak peek videos, and intro videos. Um, actually, I should put that video I showed you before in there. I didn't put that in with the uh, mini jukebox, but I should put that in just to show the people, you know, how it works, you know, like get the colors on it in case they haven't seen it in person. But, um, yeah, but that, that's what my channel's all about, folks. For all intents and purposes, it's to help inspire and share. And um, I, 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 I'll, I'm going to keep putting videos out, uh, and hopefully... As I always say in my videos, the most important thing in all in all is that you guys out there, you get a takeaway from it. That's the most important thing because if you're not, I feel like I'm not doing my job. And my job is to share this information with you guys. And it doesn't, you know, if you don't get nothing out of it, what, what's the sense, right? So, you know, I hope you like it. I hope you like my channel. I hope you like the videos I put out, the content. And uh, I hope you you like me. And um, if you do, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And if you want to be updated to when I post that in the videos, please hit that bell notification icon. My name is Rich Bassini. You're watching Reselling News for December 30th, 2021. Um, I don't know if I'm going to probably be doing a video tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 31st. 
but uh, we still got a little, you know, another day left here for this year of 2021, which has been really crazy for some people. It's been crazy for me, not in a bad way, but you know, kind of like a little, not enough time and not enough hours in a day time of thing, you know. But there are a lot of things going on uh, in this world where it's it's very hard to stay focused at times. And I have to honestly say, it's it been. Um, it's been a real crazy year. It ha really has been. It's been a real crazy year. And, you know, I talk with my, my relative, my brothers and stuff, my brother, I should say, and my relatives, and uh, we talk about business and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we, our, our concern is with everything going on, is it affecting businesses, affecting sales and stuff? And to be honest with you, um, my sales so far for December are not anything to write home about. Um, I believe they are, and I did say this at the end of the month, I like to try to do when I have 10 or more, not that it's great, uh, but I like to share, the, you know, share my listings with you guys as far as what's sold. And I try to do them on a monthly basis, again, if I do 10 or more, which is nothing really to write home about, seriously. Uh, there are people out there that do a lot better, and what I do in a month, they do in, and, and what I do in a, uh, throughout the whole month, they might do it in a day. Uh, there is a there is a uh, an eBay seller that will say, oh, I didn't do good in sales. So I got 15 orders. Like 15 orders in one day is like, wow, that's great. I wish I can get 15 orders in one day. I don't. But um, he's got a following. He's got you know thousands of subscribers on his YouTube channel, and um, he'll tell you, you know, these are from some subscribers, you know, from viewers that are making purchases from. I don't know if I have that. I don't know if I have any subscribers that uh, will purchase off of you know my eBay listings and stuff like that I don't know I, I can't say because nobody really reaches out to me and says oh by the way Rich yeah I'm, I purchased that thing from you and stuff like that or that item whatever which is understandable I mean you know look we got to get to know each other it's like it's like working on it like working on you got a new job and you're going to the office and you know you feel uncomfortable a little, a little uneasy because you don't know how the people are going to take to you and you know you're nervous because you know and then you you want to make a good impression and stuff like that you want to do the right you want to do right by your uh you know your your co-workers and stuff like that especially if they're new they don't know you for you know from adam right um but it's the same thing with with youtube um we got to get to know each other you know that's why the more subscribers i get and the more you watch my videos you'll get an understanding of how i am you know how i feel about things how i express myself uh, the, how I how I handle certain issues that arise and then when they do come up, you know, would it be eBay or something with a buyer or something just in general, you know? I like to throw that information out there, folks, you know? What I love about YouTube is, and especially the YouTube community, and if you're a YouTuber like I am, YouTube is, the YouTube community is like one big family. I mean, literally, it's one big family. I mean, the people out there, the thousands upon thousands of people that have YouTube channels, you can reach out to them. And in most cases, if they're not too busy, they will respond to you. Okay? It, it's getting to know a person. And the only way you're going to get to know a person, and this goes out to my, not only to the new subscribers, but to the trolls out there who, who watch my videos and will give them thumbs down or whatever. That's okay. That's your you know personal take on my videos. You may not like the content I put out. You may not like me, and that's understandable. That's okay. I have, I have no problem with that, guys. Um, I still respect your your uh, you know your your how you feel you know, about my videos. They they might not be something to your liking. That's fine. I understand that. Um, but at the same time, as I said, as I said in many other videos, it's nice if those people could reach out to me. And tell me the things they would like to see me do more of. Uh, I'll be more than happy to oblige in any way I can. If you have questions and stuff like that, now I get I get a lot of response from my old videos. And I'll be honest with you, the videos that people are contacting me about are not so much the reseller news or the Let's Talk eBay. The ones they contact me about is the demo videos, the videos I did uh, pertaining to. Uh, an item I sold, electronic item, a printer or or a, a, a digital clock radio. I get messages like that. Well, you know, comments. It'll, it'll reach out to me. Uh, how do you set the timer on that Sony digital clock radio? 
uh, how do you work the printer? How do you connect it up? This, that, whatever. It, they give me. They get back to me. It's those are the videos that I get response from, but not from the reseller news and let's talk eBay. Now I can understand some people who watch this here right now. This video here, they may not respond to me or or interact with me. What I was saying. Oh well, Rich, I understand. We're saying you bring a good point down stuff like that. People will not interact like that, and that's fine. That's fine. I don't expect everybody to sit there and every time they watch a video, oh, I'm going to respond to this guy. I'm going to reply to him and so I understand that. It's totally understandable. But the thing is, um, I'm going to stay with. I'm going to stick to what I'm doing. And I'm going to keep putting out videos, and I hope and I pray that the people that do watch my videos uh, will get a takeaway from it. And I'm hoping that even some of the trolls that watch my videos. Even though they might not like the content, if they're eBay sellers or they're just people accidentally hit my channel, I hope they'll get a takeaway from it as well. You know, um, there's no hard feelings over here. I do respond to comments as long as they're nice. Um, anything nasty, people using profanity, saying bad things about me or whatever, I will not respond. I'm not going to get into a cyber war with anybody. Um, I said it before in my other videos, and I'm going to stick to that plan. Um, if people don't like my content or whatever, don't like me, you know, that's fine. You know, I can't change that. Just like I can't have people, you know, take that initiative and hit that subscribe button. You know, the only thing I will say with, with YouTube, if you're starting a YouTube channel, folks, and I said it before, um, it's either, you know, it's, it's a hit or a miss when you're putting out videos, uh, and you're doing your best you could do, you know, be, you know, do the best you can with it. And if people are going to either like your content or they're not, if they like it, they'll hit that subscribe button. They'll come back for more. The only thing I say is when you're doing a YouTube video for your first time, uh, be presentable. Uh, don't come off too brash or harsh, you know, hard, like, you know, like, eh, you know, like a person like you don't care one way or the other type of thing. If you got that, that personality like that, because uh, it will reflect, it will, it will send off a second, uh, uh, will send off a negative a message to that person who's trying to watch your YouTube video for the first time. So, you know, you want to be very presentable, you want to be very down to earth, and you don't want to be one of these type of people that come out very brash and like, you know, yeah, like, you know, Mr. Tough Person, you know. Be, be yourself. You know, that's why I tell my kids, be yourself, you be by yourself, you know. And I always say, don't be a follower, be a leader, you know. There's, there's always room for a person to create um, or invent what do they say necessity is the mother of invention you know um, you might stumble on something where you might be a, 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 an inventor someday uh, you might create something that something that people could use look at the people that make applications for the uh, these apps um, I know I think I, I know of two people that created apps and became multi-billionaires from them okay uh, from personal friends through a friend you know what I'm saying that's oh you did you know that person's far son created that app don't ask which app it was now you're talking years ago <laughs> I don't remember it was on a job I worked at and I didn't know until I found out later on um, I don't remember it was I don't know if it was a gaming app or some other type of app but this person now is a billionaire whatever from it um, so there's always room for you know creativity but the thing is you, you can't give up and hold yourself back to what other people say like you know the, the naysayers oh you'll never go anywhere you'll never succeed with that there look um, you know, when I started this YouTube channel, to be honest with you folks, outside of my kids, um, I didn't really have too much family support. I'll be honest with you. Um, I didn't really have people saying, hey, Rich, I wish you all the best in your divas. I wish you best with, with uh, your YouTube uh, channel. I wish you best with your eBay business. You know, I didn't, I didn't have anybody, uh, you know, family members that I remember uh, wishing me anything, you know, good like that, congratulate me or saying, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, I wish you all the best, so to speak. Good luck. You know, uh, nobody really said that, you know, but you know what? That's okay. All right. Um, I could live with that there. That don't bother me. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't frown on it. I don't pout on it. I just continue to do what I'm going to do. With the, when you're starting a YouTube channel, you're going to probably get people that, you know, in the beginning may not like the content you're putting out or may say, now there's some people out there that say, uh, when they have YouTube, you know, they're doing YouTube videos, people will leave nasty comments. Now I tell you the truth. If that's and I, I've seen, I'll tell you that something. I have seen uh, in some cases where people will leave nasty comments, and I don't. I'll tell you the truth. I don't know why 
the YouTube creator will leave those nasty comments on their, uh, their comment page. Me, if anybody was going to leave me anything nasty, I remove it. I will remove it, and I don't get. I don't rebuttal. I'm not going to get into a. I'm not going to get into a cyber war with anybody. Okay, I'm not going to sit there and you know verbatim go back and forth. Well, this that because first off, you're going you're going back and forth in a comment section. Other people who are coming to your YouTube channel for the first time, they're going to probably read those comments. I know I do. Not all of them, but I read quite a few of them, and I want to see what other uh, people are commenting on. Okay. And I tell you the truth, I mean, the sites I've been on recently, they're okay. I haven't heard anything nasty or anything like that. Maybe YouTube is cracking down on that there. Or maybe this, maybe the creator, like myself, is removing anything that's bad. You don't have to, you know, you shouldn't, as a, as, as a YouTube creator, you shouldn't have to be barraged with negativity. Okay, and that's the problem. Sometimes people, because they don't have the nerve to get up in front of a camera or webcam or whatever and do like what I'm doing because they don't, you know, and maybe that's why they do uh, say negative things because they're jealous of you. Uh, I, I, how could that person go on YouTube? And you want to know something? I got to say this here too. I, I found this really interesting. Um, I've seen it where, I'll give you an example. There was, I think on two occasions I've seen this here where I had some kind of uh, respond comment on a Cure coffee maker, I think, on what was on electric guitar, that I don't know how to play electric guitar. And I did a demo video on it. Check this out. It's the truth. Now, if you ask me what they were, I don't remember. I'm not going to, and if I didn't know the person, I'm not going to put their name out. This ain't the whole of shame here. Um, they would say something kind of like not really super bad and not really super nice. And do you know, when I looked those people up, when I went to their YouTube channel, it says this, this user has no content. None. Zero. Nada. Nothing. Okay? Those people who will make negative statements like that or comments, I'm not saying all of them. But the ones I've counted, the few, the very few I counted, like I said, didn't curse me out or say anything really bad. They just were like maybe there was a little sarcasm in their the way they were, you know, confronting the uh, the topic I was talking about. But when I looked them up, first thing I did is I copied and pasted their, um, you know, copied their name and pasted it, whatever in the YouTube search engine, right? And when I went to their site. They have no videos whatsoever, zero, but yet they will come across your channel and they'll say things that may not be to your liking if you get my drift. No cursing, not that I remember. I don't remember anybody cursing me out, but it was, I think it was on two or three occasions, maybe two or three occasions it was like that. And I looked them up and these people have no views or no videos whatsoever. So I guess that's part what makes up a troll. Um, they will go to it. They'll, I don't know how to even come across your video. Maybe they, here's the only thing I could think of is when they're looking at your, you know, maybe they, maybe the topic might get them the the title, like I'm, I talk about reselling news or talk about something I'm doing, and they just happen to you know maybe the algorithms picked up and they say maybe that's what they put in their search. Um, I don't know. Let's say a coffee, uh, the demo for the cure, uh, cure coffee maker, and they put that in their search, and then boom, I pop up, okay, and then they're looking at it. Oh, this guy is a jerk. He don't know what he's talking about, whatever. And then right away, you know, either they'll give you a thumbs down, or the sarcasm part might come out. Oh, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. This and the other. Not to have things like that. I'm using it as an example, but I'm believing that's how it starts, because me personally, when I do YouTube searches. Uh, if I'm trying to do a do-it-yourself or, you know, like I want to learn something, okay, how to fix something on my computer or whatever, I'll type it in there, okay, and a search, and YouTube search, and then you'll get a whole array of all these different uh, YouTubers out there talking about how to fix a computer, right? But every now and then, you're going to get somebody out there that for whatever reason, the person could put the, the best video out there, best graphics, this, that, and the other thing, and yet... And yet, they will find faults 
with that person and I see it, you'll see the thumbs down. Or you'll see, you don't see too many negative comments, but you know, you know, you'll see it because those people that actually are doing the, the trolling, uh, it could be, but then again, it might not also be 100% trolls either. It might just be a person just don't like the way you presented the issue or the topic, you know, um, just like with this video, you know. I'm sure I'm going to get probably thumbs down on, but you know what? Don't bother me none because I'm still putting videos out no matter what, okay? Um, I don't care if the person likes me or not. They don't like my videos. You don't have to watch them. If you don't like me, you don't have to subscribe to them. That's all okay, you know? But for the people who do like me and like the content I put out, I hope you guys do like the videos and you will keep coming back for more, okay? Um, the only way we're going to get to know each other is by, you know, interacting or, or if not interacting, at least by watching my videos, like I said earlier, and you'll get, you'll get, we'll get a feel of, of what I'm all about, you know, the type of person I am. Uh, I'm only trying to help, you know, maybe, maybe sometimes, you know, when we, uh, present the topic or an issue, maybe it doesn't come out a hundred percent. Um, and therefore that might, you know, throw you off and say, ah, I don't know. Nice guy, but I don't know if I want to subscribe, whatever. <laughs> it happens. It happens, you know. Or people just may get bored and say, oh, not this guy again. He's making another video. <laughs> I don't want to watch him, you know, whatever. But that's that's up to them, you know. Nobody's, no one's forced to sit here and say you're going to watch videos. But for those of you who, I got to say this, though, uh, and I am going to close the video because I know it's going to be a long video. I will say this in closing this out. I want to say thank you again, and I mean it. From the bottom of my heart to all of those new and the subscribers that been with me through thick and thin through years ago i started this youtube channel back in july of 2013. how i started getting more involved with it just to give you a little bio about myself i went through two company layoffs and one company bankruptcy and i figured folks let me throw my hat in the ring and try it so it turned out to be a part-time hobby to a full-time hobby. That's why I gained so many, uh, well gained, I made so many videos. Uh, I think it's up to 1,490 videos right now. Um, I was hoping by the year's end I was going to have 2,000 videos, but that's okay. But people say, what's the big deal if you have 1,000 or 2,000? I just, it's just something like a goal I want to do. I, I didn't happen. It's okay. All right, maybe by next year. Well, maybe I'll have that. I'll hit that 2,000 mark. Not for, not, not for nothing. It's just like I'm not going to get in a award or anything for it. Um, it's just something I want to achieve myself, you know. But anyway, um, I, I just want to say, you know, you know, thank you, you know. And, and I, I can't believe that I came this far with the subscribers I have, you know, and I'm grateful to all the subscribers. I mean, and, and the people who made it happen where I was able to, you know, move to the next step with this channel thanks to you guys out there because without you I wouldn't have this channel okay and I think a lot of YouTube creators they I seen it happen a lot on the ones that become successful meaning they got thousands of hundreds of thousands of subscribers and then hit that million milestone um, I don't know uh, if I'll ever hit that million milestone it may not because you know I am an older person <laughs> and it does take years and the years creep up on us and you know I don't know if you're going to see people in their late 80s and 90s doing this stuff here, but uh, heck, I'll keep doing it as long as I can. As long as I got my full faculties where I can keep doing videos, why not, you know? Um, I don't think there's any age requirements here, right? I think anybody could, well, not anybody, I think it's a start a YouTube channel, you got to be at least 18 or over. Um, I don't think there's any prerequisites as far as like, you know, uh, a timestamp where you say, uh, okay, uh, up to 70 years old, you got to retire or whatever, you know. But um, I'll do it as long as I can, you know. Why not, you know? Uh, again, if you're, if you got to, you know, you still got your faculties and you could still uh, teach people or share things with you, you know, with other people, uh, that'd be great, you know. I think that would be a good thing. But um, I like it. I like, I like creating videos and I'm going to keep at it and uh, I'm going to keep selling eBay. But again, uh, recapping. What I said earlier, um, how it turned into a YouTube uh, you know, hobby and an eBay hobby uh, is now full time. Okay, and the last job I had was back in 2016 uh, when I lost my job. The thousand jobs went overseas, and I was part of that layoff. So that's why I said, let me let me try doing it 
myself now let me see if I could do it on my own and it, it's been it's um, it's no road to riches um, it, it's a lot of work creating videos is a lot of work um, and you know doing I do the research on, on my eBay listings I try to get them higher in search rankings I try to make better sales and stuff like that by doing research on uh, marketing and you know it's it's a lot it's a lot to me it's a lot of work you know between 6 30 in the morning till 12 30 one o'clock in the morning I'm on this computer and I do take breaks I do take a breakfast break a lunch break and a, a dinner break uh, but for after that there I'm right back on this computer again so um, it's not not really too healthy to constantly be on you but when you're doing this type of work it is a lot it is a lot it's a lot of stress too you know coming up with content I would say is the most for me the most hardest part to uh, put out there for you guys to make these videos you know but um, you know it, it's something I enjoy doing you know and I hope if you guys are in a similar situation that um, you know like like what I was in hopefully not uh, if you have been you know a job loss or whatever uh, through a company you know um, what do you call it there uh, you know uh, how do you say it there? downsizing um, and you're in the same situation kind of like the same situation I was in I hope that things work out for you as well and I am going to close this video out and as I always say I might have said it before but I'm going to say it again um, if you are thinking about starting a YouTube channel I am wishing you all the best okay and you, you know keep at it don't give up and if you are thinking about selling on eBay or you are a seller on eBay I am wishing you guys all the best in sales and the best of luck until next time, bye-bye for now.